Welcome back to The Pulse. Now, first today on Pulse, the diplomatic community is getting alarmed over what they describe as signals of violence in the upcoming elections. The UK and the US are closely watching the situation, noting growing tensions as campaign rallies and public statements by candidates heat up. Despite these concerns, they remain hopeful that Ghana's long-standing tradition of peaceful elections will hold. But to achieve that, they urge on Ghanaians to reject the violence when they head to the polls as the country's reputation of peace and democracy in Africa is at stake. Here is the UK's High Commissioner Harriet Thompson speaking at the commemoration of King Charles's birthday here in Accra. Many of us here tonight will be closely following the run-up to Ghana's elections next month. The UK doesn't support any party over another, but we strongly support Ghana's democracy. Like Ghanaians, we want to see this country continue to be the most stable and successful democracy in the region. That's why we're funding independent domestic observers and why British High Commission staff will travel across the country in coordination with many other diplomatic missions to see Ghanaian democracy in action. Unfortunately, my colleagues and I are frequently told by a range of people that they fear Ghana's 2024 elections will be less peaceful than previous elections. That's worrying for everyone because an election that's not peaceful would be incredibly damaging for Ghana, as well as dangerous, of course, for those directly involved. But the good thing is that politicians and others in influential positions, many of you are here this evening, can prevent this from happening. They can use and are using their voices as leaders to send clear messages that a successful election is a peaceful one. So I urge all of you with influence to do all you can to ensure that Ghana has credible, transparent, inclusive and peaceful elections to make sure that Ghanaians continue their proud tradition of democracy. The UK cares so deeply about Ghana's democracy and future success because of the democratic values that we share. We know that economy and security of both our countries will be enhanced if we work closely together. And we know that a strong and enduring bilateral partnership that both learns from the past and looks to the future can improve the lives of people in both of our countries. Let's hear from the U.S. Ambassador Virginia Palmer, who called on all political parties to commit to peace by signing the National Peace Pact shortly after the U.S. election. She emphasized the importance of unity and responsibility, urging leaders to prioritize the nation's stability above all. This is the last in calendar year 2024, so I think sort of the exclamation mark on a year of, of what sh celebration of democracy. I think... Ghana's democracy is the most important thing. And um, we've had some interesting conversations with Ghanaian officials about the need to have a democracy dividend even in established democracies. So that, for example, the countries of the Central Sahel look and say, wow, because Ghana is democ democratic and stable, they are prospering. And um, so I'm looking to deepen the economic partnership too. Um, and I know there are lots of American companies um, and development finance institutions that are looking at um, greater investment in Ghana and partnership in Ghana. Ghana is the fourth country in Africa, I think, where we've announced it. We also have um, instituted that policy in Europe and Latin America. Um, it's not directed at the government of Ghana or at particular political parties, but we can not just refuse visas, but revoke visas for people who inter undermine or interfere with Ghana's democratic process. Um, I think it's a very useful tool to have. I hope I don't have to use it. Um, I hope it will deter bad behavior um, and hate speech. Um, and I hope that um, I'll call again for you know, early signing of the peace pact. I'll call on political leaders to come down hard on other candidates in races down the ticket or even people just raising a ruckus in um, in constituencies across the nation for, for coming out and saying that's not the kind of election we want to have. I saw a great poster. I went to see the northern um, regional minister, or the regional minister for northern region, and um, he had a sign, a big sign on the front door that said, don't insult your political opponents, um, which I thought, well, that sums it up. Um, and um, that's, that's a good message. Um, so it's a tool we have available. You'll see more of it around the world. Ghana's not singled out. 
nor is the government of Ghana or any political party, but we are not afraid to use it if, um, if there are any parties, any people or parties that, um, that undermine your democracy. So I hope that you will regard it as a useful tool.